Welcome to this quick demo of how to make a contribution to Base R. R is maintained by the R Core team. Members of the R community can contribute in various ways, for example, analysing and fixing bugs, translating R's messages, warnings and errors, testing pre-release versions of R, or developing new features. In this demo, we'll focus on bug fixing. First, we need to find a good bug to work on. Bugs in R attract in R's Bugzilla, which can be found at bugs.rproject.org. We can browse the bugs by clicking on the Browse button in the top menu. There are two categories to browse. We'll focus on R, which are the bugs in R itself. This takes you to a list of components, which are categories of bugs that you can look at. Let's take a look at documentation. This returns a list of bugs that have been categorised as documentation bugs by the bug reporter. We can browse through the summaries to look for bugs that we think we might be able to help with. Let's take a look at the last one here, clarification needed in question mark C, which refers to the help file for the C function. The top of the bug report shows some basic metadata. If we scroll down, we'll see a description of the bug by the reporter, in this case Michael Chirico. Below that, there may be one or more comments from R Core developers or other contributors. A good first issue is one where the next step is clear. The bug report might need a minimal reproducible example to use as a test case. Or the bug might need checking in the development version of R to see if it is still a bug or has already been fixed. Alternatively, the bug might need debugging to diagnose the root cause. Finally, you might contribute to the discussion of how to fix the bug or even propose a patch. It is even better if an R-Core member has shown support for one of these things in a comment so you know the next step for sure. Bug reports that are too new are best avoided as they are often taken up quickly by experienced contributors. On the other hand, Bug reports that are very old often lack consensus on the next step or require a decision to be made by R Core. You should avoid bugs where there is disagreement on the next step or someone else is clearly working on it. Finally, avoid bugs that are clearly outside your area of expertise. It can take a while to find a good issue to work on, but there are some shortcuts available. You can attend an R contributor office hour or look on the Work Out Now channel of the R Contributor Slack, where good first issues are sometimes shared. Or you can attend special events like the Bug Barbecue, where good first issues are prepared in advance. One of the hardest tasks is analysing bugs to get to the root of the issue. Let's look at an example, Bug 17863. The bug reporter provided some test code for a one-factor factor analysis. When the print function is called on the resulting test object, various elements of the result are printed as expected, including the call, the uniquenesses and the loadings. Before R 4.3.0, when the print function was called with the argument sort equals true, we get an unexpected result. The loadings are printed as a vector rather than as a matrix, so we lose the row and column labels. The print function is an S3 generic so we need to find out which S3 method is being used here. First we use the class function to find out that test is an object of class factor now. If an S3 print method exists for this class, it will be called print.factorNow. We use the getAnywhere function to search for this method. A method is found in the stats package and printed out. In the body of the function we can see the cat and print calls that print different elements of the factor now object. In the fourth line of the function, print is called on the loadings element to print the loadings. So now we repeat this exercise on the loadings element of our test object. We find out that the loadings element is an object of class loadings and there is a print.loadings method in the stats package. If we try running debug once on stats colon colon print.loadings, we get an error telling us that print.loadings is not exported from the stats package. We can access internal functions by using three colons instead, 
so debug once runs without error. Now when we run print test with sort equals true, the call and uniquenesses are printed, but when print.loadings is called, we enter a debugging environment. The body of this function is printed out to the console, and at the end, we find a browse prompt. We can press the enter or return key to step through the code in the print.loadings function, running one line at a time. Here we get to a conditional block that is run if sort equals true, as in our test case. When we press return, we enter this block and can continue stepping through line by line. At the end of this block, there is a line where an object lambda is overwritten by an ordered version of itself. Before running this line, we can print lambda with and without the ordering. Here it is with the ordering, and here it is without. Clearly the ordering is changing the structure of the object. We have found the root cause of the issue. In this case, there is a simple fix. Experienced R programmers may know that when the rows of a one column matrix are indexed, a vector is returned unless we set drop equals false, as here. We can check this fix by creating our own version of print.loadings with the fix applied. After sourcing our version of print.loadings, we can test it on the loadings element of our test object. The fix works. Once we have a fix, how can we propose it to our core? If the fix is simple to describe, we can propose it by adding a comment on Bugzilla, as I have done here. To add comments, you need a Bugzilla account. See the link for more details. Alternatively, you can create a patch using the RSVN mirror of the R sources. Find the source file containing the code you want to change. Click the Edit button. This will create a fork of the RSVN repo on your GitHub account and open a window where you can edit the file. Make the changes in the source file. When you are ready, click the Commit Changes button to commit these changes to your fork. A new branch will be created with your changes. Now you will see a Compare and Pull Request button on your fork. Click this to open a pull request back to the original RSVN repo. Enter a description of your changes. Here I have written minor change for demo. If you want, you can add more information in the comment box for people you might ask to review your pull request. Once you have created a pull request, you will be taken back to the original repo and you'll see some automated checks starting to run. These build R on different platforms and run its test suite. If the checks pass, everything in amber here will turn green. If everything looks good, add .diff to the URL for your pull request and enter the modified URL in your browser. This will generate a diff of your changes. Right click on the browser window to save this as a .diff file. You can then attach the diff file to the bug report on Bugzilla with a comment explaining your proposed fix. This quick demo has run through the basics of contributing to fixing bugs in R. For more information on this and other ways to contribute, refer to the online R development guide, attend our contributor events, or join the Slack group for peer support. We hope this has inspired you to start contributing to R.